Welcome back to My Time to Fly. I just wanted to talk real quick about transitioning from a standard fixed wing airplane to a complex fixed wing airplane. Many of you know I recently bought a Mooney. It seems like it was recently, but we're going on two years of Mooney ownership. And in my 20 years of flying, I had never flown a complex airplane before buying the Mooney. I think a lot of people have fear about moving on to the next step in their journey. Whether it be moving into your IFR or a complex airplane or a twin. They think flying's hard enough in a 172. How am I going to manage flying in a faster airplane or something where I need to be further ahead of the airplane? So I really just wanted to share a little bit about my journey, a little bit about transitioning into the Mooney. And hopefully it gives you a little inspiration to know that you can go do it. Just to be clear, I'm just an average aviator, just a normal VFR pilot. I've got maybe 200 or 250 hours now. I do a poor job at keeping up on my logbook and just like to go out and fly for fun and a little bit of travel. The whole point here is that what I initially thought was going to be a big deal turned out to be not so much of one. And I think that anybody can do it. So I just wanna talk about the things that are different in a complex airplane and the things that just aren't so different. Also, I think it's important to realize that the skills or abilities or cadences that you get into in a complex airplane can make you a better pilot in any airplane. Those cadences are important to maintain when you go back to flying an airplane that maybe isn't so complex. One quick disclaimer. I understand not all complex airplanes are as simple as my Mooney. What was or wasn't a challenge for me may or may not be a challenge for you. So let's talk about the major components of flying and what is or isn't different in each of those components. So first, pre-flight. I would say it doesn't really change a whole lot. Sure, you have to get underneath, um, look up in the wheel wells, check for obstructions there where that wouldn't be a problem before, make sure there's no birds nesting or uh, whatever might be able to get into those wheel wells wherever you live. So there's some more spaces and nooks and crannies to look at. There's a little bit more linkage to look at. But in general, it does not add significant time to my pre-flight. So the next major phase in flight for me is the run-up. There is one major task that you have to accomplish during the run-up, which you don't in a non-complex airplane or a traditional airplane, um, and that is cycling the prop. It's something that it's easy to go through the motions of doing, just pulling the prop lever three times. But it's really important to understand before you pull that lever what you're looking for. So the goal of cycling the prop, of course, is to get oil circulating through that prop governor, that, that whole system. So the first thing I do when I cycle the prop, and if your oil's still a little cold, it might take longer than you would think it would, but I cycle the prop and just check for an RPM drop. I don't look for anything else more. I'm watching my tack, watching for the RPM drop, and of course you hear it. The second time I cycle my prop, I'm actually looking for a change in manifold pressure. So when you pull the prop back, the manifold pressure should rise a little bit, I can hear the change in RPM, so I know that's happening, and I'm focusing on the manifold pressure gauge. And then the third cycle, I actually look at the oil pressure gauge, because you are taking a bunch of oil from that sump and pushing it out into, or circulating it out into the prop, um, you should see a slight drop in oil pressure. So that's what I look for. Pretty straightforward. So then you simply have to manage your RPMs. That's probably the biggest change in this whole equation If you is you have to manage your RPMs through the entirety of the flight. But there's a couple points in the flight where it's, in my opinion, more important to manage than others. And that's takeoff and landing. So the next phase in flight, of course, is takeoff. And you have to ensure that 
your RPMs are full forward or uh, the highest RPMs that you can get. So a fine pitched prop to give you as high of RPM for takeoff. So you take off and you're barreling down the runway uh, and you're up into the air as you see here. Um, and there's a couple different options. And this is where flying a complex airplane, in my opinion, just takes a little bit of pre-planning, a little bit more pre-planning. So for me, what I'm doing next depends greatly on my mission for that day, okay? So, well, first, I'm always gonna put the gear up, right? Now, every plane is a little bit different. So me cycling my gear in the Mooney is a mechanical system. Uh, I just pull the Johnson bar, or unlock the Johnson bar, and um, push it down to the ground, and the gear is up. Um, so that's quite straightforward and easy to accomplish. The second thing that you have to do, and this is where it really depends on your mission, is you have to adjust your power settings. In a complex airplane, you're actually managing power and RPMs separately. So I'll give you two examples of where I might manage these differently. So number one, I'm just hanging out and doing pattern work for the day, okay? Um, I'm not going anywhere. So I would take off full fine, full power, and I'm staying in the pattern. So as soon as I approach uh, pattern altitude, I would pull the power back to a much lower power setting. Um, maybe I would take off, you know, whatever it is, 27 inches, 28 inches, whatever maximum manifold pressure is. I might pull that back to 14 or 10 or, you know, it just depends on the airplane. And in this case, me personally, I never adjust the propeller when I'm doing pattern work. Um, there's really no need to. Some people I think do, and maybe they have reasons. If you have reasons, tell me. I wanna know in the comments, maybe I need to adjust what I'm doing. But with the speed of the Mooney, um, I've always found it best to leave it in full fine and just uh, pull the power back uh, and try and keep the airplane slow in the pattern. Um, when I say slow, uh, below 120 miles an hour, which is my gear speed. Okay, so let's say I'm doing something totally different now. I'm going cross country. What I would do is take off and I would leave my manifold pressure, my, my power all the way forward. The throttle would stay pinned to the firewall. If I'm planning a cross country that's you know more than 45 minutes, it's likely just gonna stay all the way up to the firewall and I'm gonna climb up to an altitude that brings the manifold pressure down. Then my next steps, as I climb up through about 500 feet above the ground, right? So halfway up to pattern altitude, I start to roll my propeller back, right? So I like to climb out at full power, 2,500 RPM. And then as I level off and get into a cruise, just depends on the situation. I'm, of course, my manifold pressure is way less now because there's just not enough air at altitude to make manifold pressure. So, you know, if I'm at 7,000 feet, maybe my manifold pressure's, you know, down in the lower 20s, then I'll pull my RPM back to whatever my desired cruise RPM is for that trip. If I've got a good tailwind, maybe I pull it back a little bit further, 2,300 or, you know, somewhere in that RPM. If I'm Fighting a tail or fighting a headwind, or maybe I'm in a bit of a hurry. 2400 or 2450 are pretty comfortable RPM settings in the Mooney, and that's it. Uh, of course, I'll lean as I go, right? Which you should be doing in any airplane. Um, typically, we're fortunate with complex airplanes that we have a EGT to be able to lean. But I know more and more airplanes are equipped with engine monitors now. So it's likely you'll be able to lean as well um, using EGTs or you know whatever method. Um, but that's not different. So we're all leaning and on our merry way. And then the only thing I'm really watching throughout the flight, because I'm full forward on the power, is just making sure my RPM stays where I want it. And then going through the same normal things that any other pilot does. Of course, aviating, navigating, communicating. So then back 
to the last phase of flight, uh, which in many cases is landing. I sure hope it is. <laughs> so things do get a little bit different and it's important to follow checklists. Um, and every airplane is different, but I'll talk through the Mooney and kind of how it works for me. If I'm at a high altitude, I'll just kind of roll the nose over and let it accelerate. And as the airplane accelerates and I get into some more dense air down low and my indicated airspeed is higher than I wanted or higher than I want or starts getting up towards, you know, red line, let's just say, not that I push it that far too often. Uh, I just start to pull power back and adjust my mixture towards the more rich setting. Um, and typically I leave the prop alone. I'm not touching the propeller really until I'm at pattern altitude and approaching uh, the airport. This is something that can very easily get missed because it may not really impact your approach to land. Really, the only reason you're setting the propeller to full fine is in the event of a go around, you wanna have as much power available to you as possible. And if you have that uh, propeller still rolled back into a cruise setting, when you go to push the power forward, forward, the engine will not spin up as fast as it could. So that's number one. And number two, you have to get the gear down. Uh, this is where, you know, the traditional gumps check kind of comes into play. So, um, and what I mentioned earlier with the need to take your learnings from flying complex airplanes and roll them into flying any kind of airplane, I think the gumps check is one of those pieces that really should be rolled in. It's very simple. Gas. Am I on the fullest tank? Is my fuel pump on? Um, in the event that you have a fuel pump. Undercarriage. Right, for me, it's down and locked. And I actually grab the Johnson bar and pull on it and make sure that it's locked in place, okay? Mixture, is it rich? Um, again, an easily missed thing uh, because it may not impact your performance. If you left it leaned back a little bit and you're at a very low power setting, you might not hear or feel anything different. But when you go to push that power forward for a go around, you could be in a bad spot. And then the P, which is prop, right? Prop is full fine. That is one that you wouldn't have, again, in a conventional airplane, but it's worth thinking about. And then for me, S actually stands for something. Even though I don't talk about it out loud a whole lot, it's uh, safety, so seat belts, secure. Um, all luggage is secure. Everything's put away for the landing. Again, that is a big difference to me as I moved in a, to a complex airplane. But if you manage those things, if you manage uh, the propeller at takeoff and at landing, if you're cruising around, it's real easy. You really don't touch it unless yours is like mine and it likes to wander. Uh, and the gear at takeoff, you put it up and at landing, you put it down. Uh, flying the airplane, to me, really not that much different. I'm sure there are complex airplanes out there that fly in the same characteristics as your standard Cessna 172. Again, the bigger change for me was moving to the Mooney, the speed of the Mooney, and just learning all of the idiosyncrasies of that airplane. One other thing I'll mention, flying in a complex airplane will force you to think a little bit more about troubleshooting when things go wrong. So for instance, I have a mechanical gear. If my gear doesn't come down, there is no secondary system. Many airplanes with an electric driven gear uh, have a secondary system to deploy the gear in the event of an emergency, whether it be a pull cord or maybe there's many other, I'm not too familiar. So to wrap this up, don't be afraid of complex airplanes. If all of your experience, whether it be training or your piloting experience is in Cherokees or 150s or 172s, very simple airplanes, and you have a desire to move up into something faster, more economical, uh, more complex, it's my opinion, you will conquer it. Just take some extra time before you go flying to think through how all of your systems work, how the airplane functions differently than what you're used to. Get some good instruction and go conquer it. Thanks again for being here on My Time to Fly. If you have any questions about my experience flying complex airplanes or anything for that matter, drop a comment below. I respond to them all. I want us all to be in this together as we all go find our time to fly.